Hello there, truth seekers. It's good to see you all here again. This is, of course, your regular dose of royal news and analysis, guys. We are bullish on this one. It's going to be an absolute epic. It's me back with another scorching hot take, of course, guys. So grab your popcorn because today. We're diving into the latest chapter of the Sussex Saga, and let me tell you, it's a doozy. So, now, you know, folks, sometimes I wonder if Meghan Markle wakes up every morning and thinks, how can I make sure all eyes are on me today? I mean, seriously, this woman seems to have an insatiable hunger for the spotlight. It's like she's addicted to the drama, and Harry, well, he's just along for the ride, isn't he, really, guys? Speaking of Harry... Man, how that mighty have fallen. Remember when he was the cheeky, lovable prince? Now he's what? Meghan's favorite royal lapdog? Harsh, I know, but come on. The guy's gone from serving his country to serving his wife's PR agenda. It's kind of sad, really, but let's talk about the real tea that's been spilled recently. Paul Burrell, Princess Diana's former butler, just dropped some major bombshells about the royal family's plans for the second anniversary of Queen Elizabeth's passing. And guess what? Harry and Meghan are nowhere to be seen in those plans. Absolutely ouch. According to Burrell, the royals are planning a private, intimate gathering at Balmoral. Now, for those of you who don't know, Balmoral was like the Queen's happy place. It's where she spent her summer, where she could let her hair down. Figuratively speaking, of course, that hairdo was unmovable. And it's where she took her final breath two years ago. A sad sad occasion indeed now burrell says it was so fitting that she passed away at balmoral it was the place she cherished most where she and philip created countless joyful memories with their family can you imagine how poignant this gathering is going to be the family coming together sharing memories probably shedding a few tears and harry and meg they're not invited to the party whatsoever now i can almost hear megan screaming from here can you picture it uh, pacing around the Montecito Mansion, probably knocking over some overpriced vases, screaming, How dare they? Don't they even know who I am? Well, Meg, they know exactly who you are, and that's why you're not there. And Harry, oh, Harry, I bet he's feeling pretty humiliated right now. I mean, this is his grandmother we're talking about, the woman who was not just his queen, but his commander-in-chief, as he once put it, and now he's been effectively blacklisted from this intimate family gathering that has certainly got to sting but let's be real for a sec are we really surprised i mean after everything that's gone down in the past few years the oprah interview the netflix dark harry's tell-all book did they really expect to be welcomed back with open arms come on now you know i've got to hand it to king charles he's shown some real backbone here word on the street is that he's made his final verdict megan is not worthy of any royal spotlight and can you blame him? This woman has been nothing but trouble since she stepped into the royal circle. She's like a bull in a china shop. But instead of China, it's centuries-old royal tradition. She's smashing. And Harry, well, he's made his bed, hasn't he? He's chose Meghan over his family, and now he's got to lie in it. Even if that bed is a multi-million dollar mansion in California. Poor guy, right? That's sarcasm, folks, in case you couldn't tell. But here's the thing that gets me. Paul, bless him, couldn't resist twisting the knife a little. He went on live air and basically trashed Harry and Meghan blacklisting. Talk about rubbing salt into the proverbial royal wound. But you know what, guys? Maybe they need to hear it. Maybe they need someone to tell them, hey, you can't have your cake and eat it. Because that's what they've been trying to do, isn't it? They want it out of the family but they still wanted the perks. They wanted the privacy, but they keep putting themselves in the spotlight. They wanted to tell the truth, but they didn't want to face the consequences of the truth. Well, guess what, Harry and Meg? The royal family has spoken and the message is clear. Get lost, spotlight-hungry backstabbers. Now, I know some of you out there might be thinking, come on, Ben, aren't you being a bit harsh here? Maybe I am, but you know what? Sometimes the truth hurts, and the truth is, Harry and Meg have brought this on themselves. Think about it. They spent the past few years airing the royal family's dirty laundry to anyone who would listen. They've made accusations of racism, of neglect, all sorts of nasty things. And they expected what? To be welcomed back with open arms? To be included in intimate family gatherings? Come on. The royal family is many things, but it's not stupid. 
They know that including Harry and Meghan in this anniversary gathering would be like inviting a pair of hand grenades into a china shop. And let's not forget this gathering isn't about Harry and Meg, it's about Queen Elizabeth. It's about remembering a woman who dedicated her entire life to service, who was a constant presence in the lives of millions for over seven decades. And you know it's kind of ironic when you think about it. Meghan came into the royal family. Oh yeah, she came into the family and uh, yes, she thought about modernizing it really and in a way she has but not in the way she intended and Harry, oh Harry, I can't help but wonder what is going through his mind but you know what gets me, the wasted potential Harry and Meghan could have been a force for good within the family, they could have used their platform to make change and for now for the chance to hang out with Oprah and Ellen I mean come on but hey actions have consequences right and this is the consequence you know I can't help but think what Queen Elizabeth would make of this she was always about duty I think she'd be heartbroken but who am I kidding if there's one thing we've learned about Meghan and Harry it's that they don't seem to learn from their mistakes they just double down and play the victim and wait for the next opportunity well I've got news for you Sussex is the spotlight has moved on and the royal family has moved on too. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel, right? It's just my opinion, but something tells me I'm not the only one thinking it. So what do you think? Am I being too harsh? Or do you agree that Harry and Meghan have made their bed and now they must lie in it? Well, we would love to know the answer. What on earth do you think about this royal news and analysis, guys? This is incredible. We want to hear from you, so if you could, please leave us a comment uh, down below. It would be a massive, massive honor to read what you have to say and get back to you as soon as possible. The heart of the community is what drives this channel. And if you want more content like this steaming hot royal news, then do not worry at all, guys. Don't worry one bit. I'll be back soon with some more ow, scalding hot, piping hot epic royal tea. But, of course, before closing in, guys, you know the epic drill. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to help us pump up those big numbers and share the video to spread the word. Give the video a like, smash the like button, and also turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever we drop some new royal news and analysis. It really helps us out here at the channel. So, we really appreciate that, guys. Help us spread the word. And lastly, I just want to say a huge thank you for listening right until the end and for your enormous love and support. So, well, that brings us to the end of the video. So until next time, guys, we will, of course, see you very, very soon for some more in-depth royal news and analysis. Goodbye for now from me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.